I find myself tinkering around with some little piece of equipment or some new type of tool or something like that, I always find myself wondering, what are all the bits made of? I mean, what are all the materials that make up all these little bits? If I wanted to make them from scratch, where would I go? Would I dig them from the ground? Would I take them out of the water? Or, I don't know. And there's so many different materials around us. There's metals and plastics and all sorts of bits and pieces in between. So today I thought we'd focus on a material that's all around us. This knife is made out of it. This screwdriver, this pliers. They're all made from the same material. It's called steel. Now, if you wanted to make a knife, for example, or a pliers from scratch, you'd probably go and buy some steel. But if you couldn't go to buy some steel, how would you do that? Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to start from the very start of the process and we're going to make steel in a way that anyone can do at home. So the first step is we're going to go outside and we're actually going to go to the bog. So if we want to figure out where steel and iron things come from, we need to come to a place like this. We're at a bog on the Westmead Offaly border and we're going to look for a thing called iron ore. Without this, you can't get steel and iron. Let's go. We're still searching for the iron ore. We've kind of gone in a bit of a roundabout loop and we're going by this old quarry lake, but apparently we're going to find the ore if we keep going this way. So we're on the bog now and we can see black soil everywhere and that's the peat of the bog. What we're looking for is a red seam. If we find red, that means we're starting to see iron oxides, which will lead us to iron ore. Let's have a look over here. All right, so now you can see the soil we're standing on is red. This means there's iron oxides and there's going to be iron ore. And if you're really lucky, you'll even find pieces right on the surface. Here it is. It's metal. This is iron ore. So here we have a really big chunk of iron ore. So there's what's called a vein of this running. So it's a big long stream of this. And this will be able to be turned into iron and steel. Okay, so we have our iron ore. We dug it up out of the ground. This is a piece I actually just found sitting on top. So how does this become this? What do we have to do to get the steel out of this somehow? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take it to a furnace. We're going to have to get it really hot and we're going to have to be able to change it into the pure metal that we want. So in order to do that, we're going to catch up with some of the guys from the bog and we're going to see how we build a furnace and how we can get metal out of this rock of iron ore. So let's do that. So we're here in the village of Tang, County Westmead, to follow up with some of the guys who are with us on the iron ore dig. And they're building a furnace and they're going to show us how to turn that iron ore into usable metal. Let's go have a chat with them and see how they do it. All right, so I'm chatting with one of the guys, Tim, here. And Tim is going to take us through the stages that we're going to have. So Tim, how are we going to turn this iron ore into usable metal? Well, this stuff here, it um, came from iron rich rocks in the bog. And it flowed along with the water and then this little bacteria came along and they drank the water and they sort of deposited the iron in these hard orange deposits that we find in the okay. bog. We went to the bog and dug it up. And it's iron oxide, so it's iron with oxygen attached, and it's really strongly held on, the oxygen. Uh -huh. But charcoal, when it burns, makes carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, and that's even hungrier for oxygen okay. than the iron is. So when the iron passes down through the hot furnace and it meets a molecule of really hot carbon dioxide, uh -huh. the carbon dioxide says, whoa, there's a free oxygen there, and he grabs it and steals it. Okay. And that leaves a little blob of pure iron flowing down. Ah, so it takes the oxygen and away from it. The uh -huh. other thing that's in here in this ore is rock. Uh -huh. And at the temperatures that we're in our furnace, the rock is actually melting. Okay. And this rock is melting. It's really useful because it's covering up the little balls of iron uh -huh. as they fall past the air. Okay. Because if they fell past the air without being covered and lots of air hit the iron, it would just turn back into iron oxide and again. We and we don't want iron oxide. About okay. that. And then in the bottom of the furnace, all these little pieces of iron sit in the pool of molten rock called huh. slag. And they sort of gather together in a lump. Okay. And that lump of iron is what we're after. We're trying to grow that lump of iron inside okay. the furnace and make it stick to the wall in a certain place. Fantastic. So that we can... Um, basically 
pull it out hammer the hell out of it with great big hammers and it'll all be great fun with sparks and stuff flying Love everywhere. It. Well, we're very excited for that, Tim. But Tim, maybe you can bring us over to the furnace and just point and show us what actually happens as the iron ore moves through the furnace. Let's right. go have a look. In the past now, there would have been a man with great big bellows and he would have had to work hard all day, probably a team of men pumping and pumping. But we're cheating and using a bit of electricity and a modified raincoat to blow some air in. This piece here is called the toyer, and it's the air that goes into the furnace. So the hottest part of the fire that's burning inside the furnace is kind of a, a, a teardrop or egg-shaped big hot lump in here, and the air is blowing in. Now, as Gwilym adds ore, and this is charcoal, so the charcoal and the ore is added at the top, and it slowly passes down. The charcoal is quite wet. You can see this piece is steaming. Okay, and so the first thing that happens is things get dry and then they pass down to about here where the temperature is higher is beginning to be about 500 degrees here. This ore is, it's not just simple iron oxide, there's a whole range of iron oxides in it and there's a whole series of chemical reactions that have to happen one after another. So, you know, iron with three oxygens gets reduced to iron with two oxygens which gets reduced to iron with one oxygen uh -huh. and every time it's taking a molecule of carbon monoxide to do that. Fantastic. Now the piece of carbon monoxide that robs the bit of oxygen down here, yeah. it might meet a piece of charcoal a bit higher up okay. after it's turned to CO2 and because the charcoal is really greedy it'll steal the oxygen I'm just a carbon atom, you've got carbon over there with two atoms, yeah. and it's really hot, I've got the power to grab an oxygen off you and turn back into carbon monoxide. So this reduction can happen again and again and again as we travel up. So there's a real interaction happening here whole, between all it's, the it's different elements. impossibly difficult and complicated to understand from the perspective of science. Yes. But the men who did this, 3,000 years ago didn't have any science. So this, this technique... All they had was their eyes and their ears and their taste and their smell and their touch. Okay. And these are the things that we use today in the same way as they did in the past to judge whether things are going okay or not. So you're telling me, Tim, that this method that you're doing here is a very old style method. Very old and it requires a developed skill and judgment that's built up over years. We all went to the bog some bags with this lovely iron ore. And this is what it looks like when you, when you pull it out of the bog. And apart from iron in here, there's going to be things like a bit of phosphorus, a bit of manganese, and all sorts of other things. And um, the quality of the ore, this is all really good stuff. We're very lucky, we're using bog ore, which is the best kind for this kind of furnace, for easy smelting. There we go. You can see inside here, do you see it has a very porous structure? And that means that when it gets inside the furnace, it's got lots of surface area. Okay. And of course, these chemical reactions can only happen when the things are actually touching each other. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So, the more so surface area you have, the better your chemical reactions can And is seen. that why the guys are breaking them up into small That's parts? That's why they're breaking it up into okay, small parts. Okay, so you have more surface, surface area. area. So we can okay. get more reaction. We need a lot of iron in, mixed in with the melted rock uh -huh. to make the melted rock thin. Uh -huh. It has to flow easily. So the rock is going to turn into liquid? Into the melted rock, yeah. it'll be too thick and gloopy, like heavy okay. honey. And the iron balls won't stick together properly. I really like the idea that it's like cooking because if you're cooking, you might have a recipe, but you can kind of use your own sense uh, of like, Absolutely. oh, that's a bit too yeah, sticky yeah. or it's a bit too hot. That's and right. so it's kind of that sort of vibe that, that, that's happening we've, here. We've already had to do that today. We noticed our charcoal was a bit wet and heavy. Yeah. And we thought that the furnace wasn't getting quite hot enough. Okay. So we blamed the ch heavy charcoal and we've changed the ratio of charcoal to iron uh -huh. ore that we're adding to the furnace. Hoping by adding more charcoal, we'll raise the temperature. This is the kind of stuff we want to use in our furnace. Nice, regular sized. That's a bit big, really. We'd like lovely, even sized lumps. We don't want it to stick in the shaft and not fall even. Okay. But the charcoal that we make, it's like this. Okay, big pieces. Big pieces, small pieces, uh -huh. lots and lots of dust. So, the 
we need to break it up and sieve it and sift it. It's very it light. An awful lot of physical work yeah. to make a furnace crush the ore, crush the charcoal, make the charcoal. And at the end, we'll be lucky if we get a four kilogram lump of usable iron. Okay, okay, fantastic. So, so that's very, very expensive, hard one iron. It'll take us a week, probably, from beginning building yeah. our furnace to having a piece of iron that we can forge in our forge. Now, the guys are very busy operating the furnace, so we thought we'd come and have a look at where they make their charcoal. So, all you need to do to make charcoal is to dig a big hole in the ground and fill it with timber, yeah, trees. You lay the trees down in a pile like this and you start a fire. So you, the important thing to make charcoal is you cover the fire so that not so much oxygen can get in. So after several days with the fire slowly, slowly burning, what you're left with is, instead of just ashes, you're actually left with pieces of charcoal. And this is the fuel that the guys are using to power the furnace. It burns hotter than wood and that's very important when you want to melt rock and metal. All right. That was very exciting. The guys are all working super hard in these really hot conditions. And we have something, some glowing mass of stuff came out of here and the guys are gonna process it and see what happens and we'll be able to find out what it is. Hopefully it's our iron. So we're finished with the furnace and now we're down here in the forge with Gwillem and he's going to show us how we're going to turn this iron into a useful object. So let's take a look at how you can work some iron. Here we have an amazing spoon that Gwillem has made for me and I'm going to use this to stir my tea. So we really enjoyed this episode. We saw that you can go to the bog, you can dig up this iron ore, you can take it to a furnace, smelt it down, take it to the forge, hammer it out into whatever you want. And this is a steel spoon because the iron absorbed lots of carbon as it was being put through the furnace and was being worked here in the forge. And steel is just iron with a little extra carbon. So that answers our question. Thank you, Gwilym, and thank you, Tim. Well